I have something crazy to tell you. I convinced a scammer that I died. I know what you're thinking. How is that even possible? How could they think that you're dead if you're dead and can't tell them that you're dead? That was a sentence, right? In case you haven't seen any of the live streams of me filling you in or the previous videos that started this entire scam bait that has lasted me months. Yes, sir. This is David Wilson calling you from the Publishers Clearinghouse Company. Your survey that you have sent out to the Publishers Clearinghouse Company, it may take a while, but if you select it for this month's lucky winner, you won yourself a certified cashier's check and a brand new vehicle from the Publishers Clearinghouse Company. We tried to get to you today so we could make your presentation, but we don't. Sir, as soon as you get this call, please contact us at 818-7924. You can ask for David Wilson or Mr. Peter Clark. We're looking forward to your call to make your presentation as soon as possible. Bye-bye. And what is the date of birth, ma'am? My date of birth? Well, I don't have a bird. I have two cats. If you're on the phone and you're lying to me, are you playing around with me? This gamer known as Peter Clark believed me, and I strung him along for days that turned into weeks that turned into months, and now he thinks I'm dead. He tells me in order to receive my prize money and my new Mercedes Benz, I would have to send $800 in shipping and handling fees, which like, what? Number one, I know I don't have $800 just lying around. If I want a million dollars, you pay for it. Then of course I'm like, oh, of course I'll send the $800. I was like, let me send you a nice check in the mail. Then he gave me a real address that does exist. So I'm assuming that he has a money mule. After that, I drove him crazy for days and weeks saying like I kept getting the check returned to me. I even created a fake shipping label online so that he would have a tracking number that just went nowhere and that frustrated him even more. He was getting so fed up because he really thought he was getting $800 and that I was just too stupid and spacey and whatever to actually get this check to him correctly. So you want to be my PayPal and I need an no, email address. No, I don't want, no, I don't want to be your PayPal. I cannot understand you on the phone. I tell you about PayPal then you're talking about friendship and stuff like that. Then I was like, how do I carry this on and make it even more ridiculous? So then I was like, ding, ding, ding. I'm going to pretend that coincidentally, I did win Publishers Clearinghouse, but I'm going to make it believable and say that it was for a lot less money than I thought. So I sent him a text saying, oh my gosh, thank you so much. I received the money today. For some reason, it was only $10,000 rather than the million that you said. There was no car, but it's okay. It was actually on the news. Everything is very exciting. And I went as far as to call him and leave a voicemail pretending to cry. And I went as far as to look up YouTube videos of people actually winning so that I would have the sounds and the ambiance of an actual celebration with the check and the balloons and I left him a bunch of voicemails in a row crying shaking so excited so happy thank you for everything thank you so much this is all because of you god bless you Peter Clark hello uh peter clark i just wanted to call and tell you i'm here with the television people and and everything and they brought the balloons and the only thing is i'm a little upset that it's not 2.5 million it's only 10,000, but i i just wanted to go ahead and and thank you for this moment it's been truly life-changing I, I i thank you so much and i'm really glad the money got there safely and and everyone's so happy to see me, and I'm 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 I'm, I'm speechless. And, and thank you so much. I I can't believe it. Thank thank you, sir. Thank you, Peter. Thank you for your blessings. Thank you so much. Yada yada yada. Then I'm like, how do I waste his time and get his hopes up even more? So I had reached out to him saying like because of you i am so rich and i have all this extra money i'd love to share some of it with you please let me know if i can give you some of my winnings to where he was like very exciting was like yes absolutely like his mind is probably like <clears throat> he's thinking my lucky day this lady fell for it and coincidentally she also won and now she wants to send me even more money obviously and at this point i know you're saying like 
does he really believe this? Like, this is kind of crazy. Of course, he's thinking that. Is this really real? Am I really talking to an old lady? Is this like just a big coincidence or a big prank? So he then asks for proof and asks me to send him a photo of myself. Well, I can't just choose a random old lady's picture on the internet because that's not right to use it. And I don't want to use a stock photo image because he could just do a reverse search. So ding, 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 light bulb. I used the Snapchat filter and took a selfie of me as an old lady so here's what I came up with and I even made sure to do the boomer angle because you know you gotta stay believable <laughs> listen I don't know how old I'm supposed to be in that picture but I'm like a little worried <laughs> so at that point he's like okay cool like this is probably real. And then he kept trying to reach out, kept trying to reach out, really wanted his money, couldn't believe that this was happening. And I kind of ignored him for a little while. And he was probably like, where did this lady go? So I sent him a text message saying that I had COVID-19 and I wasn't doing very well. And I'm so sorry that I hadn't reached out in a while, but I'm sick and I'm trying to get better and things are crazy. And then I was like, how do I prank him again? So. Here's where it gets crazy. I called pretending to be Margaret Simpson's daughter. And I said, I don't know how to tell you this. My mother passed away. We've been trying to get in touch with you. We're not really sure who you are, but you know, you have a lot of phone calls with her. She spoke very highly of you. She's written in her journal about you. And for some reason, she left you a lot of money in her will. <laughs> Please give us a call back. We just want to get some paperwork and uh, we'd love to meet you. I know that my mother cared so much about you. Blah, 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 freaking blah. Leave your message after the tone. Hi, Peter, this is Anne calling. Um, go ahead and give us a call back at your earliest convenience so we can get all of this uh, paperwork settled. And I would love to hear more about your friendship with my mother. It seems that you really meant a lot to her. Um, yeah, I would just like to uh, chat with you and get this paperwork going as soon as possible. I look forward to speaking with you. Bye, Peter. I was like, I wonder if he'll believe this. And it turns out he did. <laughs> this is so far-fetched. Like, it's crazy. And then one morning I wake up, it must have been like two days later, and I see that I have a voicemail from none other than Mr. Peter Clark. And guys, I'm gonna play it for you right now. It is so crazy. He actually believes that I'm dead. <laughs> this is Peter Clark. And uh, I got your message. I'm so sorry about your ma'am. We speak sometime. I think it was the 20 or sometime there in March last month. And she says to me that she think that she infected with the virus. And I said, no, don't say that. Oh my God, I just cannot believe that she passed away. <sighs> just give me a call back as soon as you get my message. I'm so sorry. I know what you're going through now, but just hold on there's faith you know god god has a place for everyone you don't worry yourself just just hold on to faith uh, call me as soon as you can i'm looking forward to your call i think you said your name was on or on or something like that you just give me a call anytime and i will be looking out for your call I just, I'm not really usually at a loss for words, but this sent me, like, I, after that, I called again and I was like sending him text messages, like, hey, we just need a little bit of info, like we've got a lot of paperwork for you, which I'm just kind of doing to fish more information out of who he really is. He really thinks that he's getting some of this money from her will and testament. <laughs> What a moron. So I called, he left another voicemail the next day. Yeah, this is the card once more. So uh, I'm just saying hi and uh, trying to return your call from yesterday. I realized that you were trying to call me back. 
Okay. Cool. Well, so he gets all distorted. I don't know why, but he definitely, definitely thinks that there's money for him set aside by Marjorie Simpson, who doesn't exist, so she never died. This scam has so many layers. He tried to scam me, then I pretended to believe it, then I pretended to actually win by coincidence, then he believed that, then I died, he believed that, and then this is like the whole screen. And then he thinks there's money for him in the will and testament when none of it exists. Oh honey, there ain't nothing for ya. You poor, unfortunate loser. <laughs> to be continued.